Hello everyone and uh, let us move ahead to the next lab that is lab 13. How to implement Ajax using jQuery and JSON in MVC. Now when we say that we want to create an enterprise application using MVC then you need lot of support from other technologies as well. For example for using Ajax you need to have JSON and jQuery. In order to connect to database we need to have entity framework. In one of the previous videos I have already shown how to use entity framework. If you want to create a JavaScript view model then we need to have angular and knockout. So in other words when we say that we want to create an enterprise application using MVC then we need support of JSON, jQuery, angular, dependency injection, uh, knockout etc. But in this video we will concentrate on how to implement Ajax using jQuery and JSON. Now in this video I will not be walking through basics of JSON and jQuery. What my suggestion is to go and watch the full video series of JSON and jQuery section where we have explained these two technologies in depth. In this video my concentration is to implement Ajax by using JSON and jQuery. So before we go ahead with JSON and jQuery let us first try to understand what exactly is Ajax. Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So let us first try to understand this word Asynchronous. Now when we look at software programs you know they have a caller and they have a callee. So the caller makes a call to the callee. Now the caller and callee can be methods, it can be functions, it can be entities. So for example we can have method 1 making a call to method 2. So method 1 becomes a caller and method 2 becomes the callee. Now the caller and callee can communicate in two modes. One is the synchronous mode and the other one is the asynchronous mode. Now let us try to understand what these words synchronous and asynchronous means. Assume for a moment that method 2 is some kind of a long running process or some kind of a huge process. Assume for a moment that method 2 or the callee method has a logic which parses files of huge size. So what will happen in that case? In that case the following sequence of events will happen. First method 1 that is the caller makes a call to the method 2. Method 2 starts processing the huge file. Now uh, this huge file processing can take 10 minutes, 20 minutes you know whatever it is and for that moment method 1 goes in a wait mode. Now when method 2 completes its processing method 1 resumes execution after the same. In short method 1 waits until method 2 finishes. This kind of processing is termed as synchronous mode. While in asynchronous mode the caller does not have to wait for the callee to complete. When the callee finishes the operation he raises some kind of an event to the caller about his completion. Now the question is who is the caller and who is the callee when it comes to MVC application. The caller here is the end user. The caller here is the browser. The browser from which the end user interacts with your server where your MVC application is running. So for example in our data entry screen the customer code data entry screen the caller is the screen here the HTML the browser and he calls the server side code that is your controller code. Now let us assume that this customer screen is hitting a database you know which has lot of customer records. So if that is a scenario then the grid will take lot of time to load. So what can be the side effect of such kind of a huge data. So let us try to simulate this situation. Let us try to simulate a situation uh, on this customer screen here where you have huge amount of customer data and the grid takes lot of time to load. So now the next question is how do we simulate such high number of records in the tables? Do we go and load the database with 100,000 records? What should we do, right? Uh, now, if you go and load with 100,000 records, you know, probably it won't be feasible because, uh, you know, that would really go and fill our hard disk completely. So the best way would be now, this customer screen is, uh, it is brought up, you know, because of this interaction here. So if you remember, we had an interaction and this interaction action actually goes and fills up the customer collection by using the entity framework collection, uh, entity framework classes and then gives that collection to the enter customer screen. So how about doing something like this? 
how about putting a delay here so a delay if you can put some kind of a delay here then that delay would simulate loading large number of records right so what i'll do is in order to put a delay here i'm going to use the threading namespace i'm going to use thread dot sleep in case you're new to threading my suggestion would be go and see the threading questions and answers video series you know where we have explained dot net threading in detail so at this moment to put delay i'm going to go and use threading here and i will put a delay of let's say 10 seconds so a delay uh, is equivalent to loading large number of records so that would simulate you know that as if we are loading large number of records right so the first thing what i'll do is let me go here and import the threading namespace so i'll say you're using system dot threading right so now let us go to the interaction and in the interaction i'm going to go and put here thread dot sleep now you can see that this sleep takes in milliseconds so one second is equal to thousand milliseconds so if you want to wait for 10 seconds that means we have to put 10,000 milliseconds unit tens hundred thousand ten thousand great nice so let us run this application and let us try to understand what kind of experience the end user can get okay so let me go and run this application so i'll say your customer slash enter now you can see that it is waiting for 10 seconds you can see this small sign here indicating that the page is waiting because our grid takes 10 seconds to load right and there the page is loaded in other words the user is getting a synchronous experience now won't it be great if we can give end user a asynchronous experience asynchronous experience means the customer entry screen loads and the user can go and type on those text boxes of customer name and customer code and in the background the grid loading process takes place and that's what exactly ajax does ajax implements asynchronous behavior using javascript language now definitely i'm not going to use javascript at this moment i'm going to use jquery because jquery simplifies javascript syntaxes jquery is a very nice library which sits on the top of javascript again in case you are new to jquery and json my honest suggestion is please go and see the videos of jquery and json and then come back here so the first thing what we have to do is we have to get rid of loading this grid from the server side it has to be loaded on the client side so what i'm going to do here is first thing is let me go back to my view here so i'm going to go to my view here view solution explorer so our view was enter customer.cshtml so let us go and browse to that view very slowly so let us go and browse to that view so enter customer.chhtml and in this view the first thing is we have to get rid of that server side code right so you can see my view is opening it's a bit slow i'm so sorry for that so first thing is i need to get rid of this right great but now if you if you get rid of that right you know that should be something you know which will help you to display asynchronously over there right but the first thing is we have to get rid of that server side code and that is done i'm going to save this and definitely but still we need a table right we need a grid or a table or some kind of a structure here which will help you to display the grid so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and create a very simple table here using html tables right and i'll tell you why i'm coming back again to html tables here so i'm going to go and create a table here uh, let me name this table with some name let me go and zoom the fonts here so that you can see it so i'll say id equal to tbl table right and uh, i'm going to have one row here it is, it is going to have two columns one column which will accommodate customer code and the other column which will accommodate customer name so i'm going to do a control c very quickly c control v then i will put a customer name right so a customer code and a customer name great so what i've done is i've created a table structure here and my plan is the following so the first thing is from the server side the complete customer collection will be sent in a json format second that json format data will come to jquery that is to javascript 
and he will go and manipulate this table with the data what has come from the server. Again, I will repeat from the server side, I will write some kind of a code which will emit out JSON collection of customer data. This JSON collection of customer data will be streamed to jQuery by using HTTP protocol. And whatever data comes inside JavaScript, that means inside my jQuery library, will then be used to manipulate this table. So let us go step by step. We have already created a table. Now the next thing is, we need to go and create some kind of a function on the controller which will emit out customer collection in a JSON format. In case you are new to JSON, please go and see the JSON questions and answers video series, you know, where we have explained jQuery, JSON, Angular, Knockout in much more details. But at this moment, my concentration is to give out a collection of customer records in a JSON format. So let me go to the customer controller here. So in this customer controller, uh, let me go and create a separate action result here. Uh, so I'll say that this action result is get customer, get customers, okay, separate action result called as get customers. Now this action result will give me JSON collection of customers, right. And uh, in order to go and get the customers, I'm going to go and use our entity framework class, which we have created. So I'll just say control C, I'll say control V here. This code remains as it is. Return JSON customers call JSON request behavior allow get. So let me explain you this code. So this code says that this get customers function, you know, it returns the customer collection in a JSON format. So what it does is it actually goes and uh, takes data from the entity framework classes and this data that means the customer collection object is then converted into a JSON format. Uh, so just to see that if this works or not, I'm going to do a control F5 here. Now very quickly one thing, you know, until the browser opens, you can see that I have also put here something saying JSON request behavior allow get. So this means that the get customers action can be called via using a simple HTTP get, right? So there our browser is running. So we will, let's go and see that uh, at least, you know, he's actually sending out JSON or not. So the first thing what we are doing is we are, we are trying to test that this get customers function, does it return JSON or not? So in order to invoke the get customers function, remember, we should first say customer without the word controller and we should call get customers, right? So get customers, where is it? So let me go here. So I'll say here customer slash get customers. So let us see, you know, are we able to see the JSON format or not? So there you can see the JSON format. So JSON format starts with a, a, a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket. So every row, in JSON starts with a curly bracket and ends with a curly bracket and it has property name and value. So you can see here that we have customer code and the value is this. Then we have customer name and the value is this. And every row is separated by a comma. So if it is a JSON collection, so in this case now it is a JSON collection, right? So it is separated by a comma and with a square bracket starting at the start and a square bracket at the end. So you can see there's a square bracket at the end, right? Again, as I've said previously also, in case you are new to JSON, my suggestion is to go and see the JSON questions and answers video series and then start over here. Uh, at this moment, I'm not going to explain JSON more in depth, but the point is JSON is a format, a format, you know, which if you give it to a JavaScript variable, uh, a JavaScript object will be created. So now the next thing is, now that we have the format, we need to go and write the jQuery code, which will consume this format, create a JavaScript collection, and then that JavaScript collection, we will bind it with the table which we have created. So the next step is we need to go and call this get customers action, get all this collection into a JavaScript variable, right? So let us again go back to the view. So let me go and quickly switch to the view here. 
Now again the first thing because we are going to use jQuery just ensure that we have the jQuery library here so you can see that we have imported jQuery 1.10 and that is very very nice good. So let us start writing code here so I am going to say a script language uh, is equal to uh, JavaScript and here I will start writing the jQuery code so remember all the jQuery syntaxes they start with a dollar sign. So what we want to do now is we want to do a HTTP get on this get customers action here and then we want to take all this collection take it into a JavaScript variable and then bind it with the table right. So in order to make a get call in jQuery we have to say a dollar dot get dollar dot get again in case you are new to jQuery I would again suggest so sorry you know I am repeating it again and again in the video but again I am suggesting please go through the jQuery video series because in this learn MVC section my main concentration is MVC and uh, the jQuery JSON you know all of these things will actually plug in to create a MVC application. So I will not be going into the basics of jQuery here but I would suggest you to go through the jQuery questions and answers video section. But very quickly jQuery is nothing but it's a reusable JavaScript library. It is a JavaScript library which stands on the top of JavaScript and makes your makes your JavaScript coding much easy. Okay. So in this case we are saying here dollar dot get in other words make a get call on the get customers action right so make a call on the get customers action there is a second uh, value which you pass to the get function here uh, string data now the string data here means that basically do you want to pass some data to the controller no I don't want to pass anything I'll say null and the last one is once you get the collection which function do you want to call right so we need to provide here the callback function so I'll give a function here called as bind data right. So let me go and create that function here so I'm going to say a function bind data right. So what will happen is once he calls this get customers action the get customer action actually returns a JSON collection. So all that JSON collection data will come inside this bind data here in this variable customers right. So what we'll do is we'll go and uh, do a for loop and inside this for loop we will go and manipulate this table here tbl1 tbl I'm sorry. So first let me get hold of the table variable tbl is equal to dollar right. So the name of the table is tbl. Right, and there it is. So you can see that I have accessed the object of table inside my JavaScript variable. So here we have got a reference of the table object. Okay. And here now I will start looping through this customer's collection and I will try to go and add records to this table object. So the first thing is let me go and use my for loop here so you can see that I am doing a for loop on this customers collection until the length of the customer collection length whatever it is so if it has 10 rows if it has 20 rows so until that length this for loop happens and while this for loop is happening what I am doing is I am going and appending the customer code and customer name inside a tr and a tg tag so I am creating a new row which has a table which has a table row and a table column here right and this row I'm going to go and add it to that table object so here I'll say tbl dot append dot append whatever is the row so the row is new row new row Now also one more thing what we need to do is we need to go and remove from this enter customer the loading of the collection because now the loading of the collection is happening here right and what we'll do is we'll simulate here now a thread dot sleep of 10 seconds okay. So you can see now what I've done is 
remember we had this enter action this enter action was populating that enter customer screen right so what i've done is i've removed the heavy loading from here so what will happen is as soon as he hits over here he will go and see the screen and later that dollar dot get call over here to this get customer section will actually be made by using ajax and he will return json and because you know this dollar dot get call is an asynchronous call the end user does not have to wait uh, you know until the grid is loaded he can start entering the customer code he can start entering the customer name and on the background you know whenever the collection comes from the server the data will be loaded inside the grid so if i go and run this so let me say if i do a control f5 so now i will say here customer slash enter there it is now you can see here i can go and type the customer name i can go and type the customer code and down below the grid data will come after 10 seconds and there it is you can see so in other words now my end user can happily go and type in these text boxes and at the background the dollar dot get is making a call to the server he is getting the json data everything is asynchronous and we are having a great user experience also some couple of improvements you know which we can make here is now what happens is you know when we go and uh, start the screen here the enter customer screen so when i go and press enter you can see now there is no message displayed here saying that the grid is loading or what and what happens is you know after 10 seconds uh, suddenly the data comes in now that is not good right so we would like to probably show some message here saying loading and once the data is loaded you know that loading can go off so let me just go and create a nice div tag here so what I'm going to do is just above this table here, I'm going to go and create a div tag. And uh, I will give a name to this div tag here saying ID status, right? So what will happen is um, as soon as, you know, we call the get customer or must be before the get customer gets called. What I will do here is I'm going to go and use jQuery and access this status div tag here so i'm going to say here okay let us go and access this status div tag so bracket start uh, double quote starts double quote ends and i will say status dot text and in this i will say loading right so what will happen is uh, as soon as this page runs and before the get customers gets gets called the status is set to loading and once the data is binded I'm going to go and say here remove the status so just make it nothing right so this would give a better experience as compared to the previous one let us go and run this let us see that uh, how it looks like so I've done a control F5 so I'll say your customer slash enter once I do that you can see now this loading status here and that is good so I can go and start using the customer name whatever it is and I know that the data is loading once the data gets loaded you can see now you know that the div tag uh, text is cleared right so now that this gives a better experience you know as compared to the previous one now ajax implements two kinds of concept first is asynchronous processing which we just saw and the second one is send only necessary data and receive only necessary data now what do i mean by that now let us try to monitor you know what kind of request and response is going from the browser to the server so for this application let us try to monitor what kind of request is sent from the browser to the server and what kind of response we are getting from the server so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a control shift i so open your application in google chrome and do a control shift i now what is a control shift i control shift i actually opens up the developer tools and in the developer tools you can see that we have a network tab here this network tab helps us to monitor what kind of request and response is coming from this application uh, to is sent from this application to the server and vice versa. Okay. Now I'm going to go and make this screen bigger here. You can now see that uh, there is one request which is seen here, this browser link. Okay. So at this moment, just leave this browser link, you know, because this request is coming from somewhere else. Uh, because there must be some kind of a plugin here right so leave this one you can see continuously there is a browser link request coming here 
leave that you know it is some external third party and that request does not belong to this screen here right so what i'm doing here let me go and uh, add some data here let me try to add some data so i'll say shave one two three and uh, cfr4005 and let me try to hit submit so there you can see it has hit the submit and you can see over here so this submit here you can see that i've clicked on this submit at the left menu here and here you can see he's saying headers and response so response is nothing but you know what kind of data is coming from the server back to the uh, client that means to the browser and this headers here we have something called the request headers so this request headers here tells us you know what kind of data is going from the browser to the server again i repeat the headers tab here indicates what kind of data is going from the browser to the server and the response here this this html here is nothing but it tells that what kind of data is coming from the server to the client that is the browser so let us try to analyze this request and response very closely so if you see the request right so what kind of data do we need to send to the server we need to send the customer name and the customer code right so if you see here in the headers you can see that there is customer data which is sent that is customer name and customer code and that is perfectly right right you can see there are other header headers here as well like cookie and uh, uh, user agent etc so these are technical uh, data which needs to be sent you know what kind of browser you have what kind of environment you have so on this we don't have really a big control but at least on our data uh, you know we have control right so on that part i think you know this is very good only the customer name and customer code is going to the server and nothing else once he clicks on submit and this data is sent and using entity framework we insert into the sql server and when mvc reply replies back with the response if you look at the response here you can see now in the response what is my expectation in the response my expectation is that i only want to see that grid data only the grid json collection data should come and not the complete html you can see in the response he is loading again the complete html with the javascript libraries as well which is definitely not good right so the other thing what we do in ajax is we only send necessary data and we only receive necessary data so in this case the only necessary data is sent but when we receive the data we are receiving the complete html so how do we go about fixing this so we don't want to see this complete html again when i click on this submit i would like to see only the collection data that is only my grid data so how do we go about it so let me again go back to my code here the main root cause why unnecessary data is coming from the server or why unnecessary data is sent from the browser to the to the server is because we make a full post back because we use the submit button and because we use the method post here so somehow first thing we need to get rid of this submit button and make a very simple button and that simple button will take the necessary form data and make a jquery post means make a post by using jquery to the server so rather than making a full submit a full page submit we would like to go and use a simple button and on the click of that button we would like to send and receive necessary data right so the first thing what i am going to do here is i'm going to go and remove this thing from here so i'll say just form tag so i'm going to make a very simple html form and uh, i'm going to go and wrap both these text boxes inside this form here let these text boxes be generated from the server that is not a problem but the problem is that you know if you use the submit button then it will go and make a full page post back which is definitely not good right uh, and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make this submit button as a button and not a submit because a submit button makes a full post back while a button you need to write logic for making a post back so at this moment because we want to send only necessary data i made it as a button okay so i'll say add customer and id equal to button btn so now what i'll do here is i'll say on this button click on click of this button on click of this button 
let me call a function here called as send data okay so let us go and write this javascript function and inside this javascript function what we'll do is we'll make a dollar dot post call okay so let us give a name also to this form here so this form i will name it as id is equal to frm1 right so when somebody comes and clicks on this button the send data function of javascript will be called he will use this id frm1 by using jquery he will refer this take all the data and make a dollar dot post jquery call to the server so let me quickly go and create a function here called as send data and inside this send data i will make a post call to the mvc controller right so the way we had done dollar dot get call now we have to do dollar dot post call now making a dollar dot post call is a three step process the first thing is we have to get a reference of the form data right or get reference of the form the html form so currently our html form is frm1 so the first thing is we have to get the reference of the form second step is we need to go and serialize the data right so whatever is the data inside the form in the text boxes those data have to be serialized again in case you are new to serialization and deserialization my suggestion is to go and watch the dotnet fundamental section where we have explained what exactly is serialization and what exactly is deserialization but the point here is serialization means whatever is the object you convert that object into stream of bytes so let us first go and do these two steps and then we will make a dollar dot post call right so i'll say var frm dollar because because we are going to use jquery to refer to the form get hold of frm and serialize serialize this form object so now once we have the serialized data inside this frm variable here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say a dollar dot post so make a post call remember we make a get call when we want to get data from a server we make a post call when we want to send data right so i'm going to say okay make a post call so where do you want to make a post call so we want to make a post call let me quickly switch back to my controller here so in our, in our controller we had this submit action right so i'm going to say here okay make a post call to the submit action and the second thing is string data so what kind of data we want to pass we want to pass this serialized frm data here and once he has inserted what we would like to do is we would like to go and call this bind data method right so we would like to go and call this bind data method here so whatever new data has been inserted it will go and refresh the whole table and show us the binded data right great but now we have to do couple of changes to the submit action so our submit action here now all these things are same adding to adding to the database is same but now we don't have a concept of view model again i'm repeating we don't have a concept of view model because now the data is exchanged between the client and the server or else between the browser and the server using json so there is no concept of view model view model concept is there when you are doing things on the server side so the first thing is uh, there is no concept of view model and second which is very important here is we are not going to return a full blown view so you can see here we are returning a view here called as enter customer right so we won't be returning a full blown html view because we want to return only the customer collection the json customer collection data so the first thing is this view goes off and we are going to return a json result right so we are going to return a json result of customers collection okay and i'll just say your json result behavior dot allow get okay so that is the first thing uh second thing is we don't have 
a concept of view model anymore, right? So I'm going to just go and delete this so that you know our code looks much better. So this is not needed, right? So if the model state is valid, he will add to the database. And uh, once the adding is successful, he will return a collection back to the client. And what will happen? The collection will be sent to this bind data function what we have, which we have already written. And this customer collection will then be looped by using the for loop and the table will be created at the client side. So you can see now here, you know, only necessary data, only necessary customer data is sent forth and back. So let me do a control F5 and uh, there our application is running. So I'll say a customer slash enter. So you can see that it is loading the data in an asynchronous manner and that is very good. Uh, let me go and type here Koirala KOI90880. Okay, remember uh, we had put some validation here and let us click on add customer. Now, once you click on add customer, this data gets added to the grid, right? So, Koirala and Koi9080, we should find it somewhere down below. Let us see. Yeah, there it is. You can see it has added successfully to the database nice but again this screen is not looking good you know because what should happen is as soon as uh, the adding is done to the database this uh, text box should get cleared off that is one thing and second you know when i click on add customer i should see here some kind of a status saying adding customer and added successfully okay so let us go and fix those aesthetic things and then we will go and see something uh, you know about the request and response which is sent from the browser to the server so let us let us do the following first thing when i click on add customer and if it is successful both of these text boxes should get cleared off second thing when i click on add customer i should see here something saying adding to the database and once it is added we should see a message here added successfully so let us go step by step so the first thing is as soon as he clicks on the button uh, we will set the text here in the send data so in the send data i will set the text as uh, adding please wait okay and once the data comes in everything is posted properly you can see that it goes and sets the text to null so once the bind data has finished he will set it to nothing so that that code is already there and also the next thing is once the submit has happened we would like to go and set the customer code and uh, name text box to nothing means we would, we would like to clear it right so let us go and get hold of the id so the id of this text box at this moment would be customer dot customer name right and the id of this text box would be customer dot customer code let us quickly go and check what kind of id is generated because at this moment he is using this lambda expression so let us go and quickly go and check you know what kind of id is getting generated so i'm going to say here customer slash enter so let me do a page source here view page source so let us see what is the id 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 of the text box yeah it is customer underscore customer name and customer underscore customer code right so we have to refer in jquery by the id right so once the send data is successful i'll say here dollar hash take this text box and set and set the text to nothing and also the other text box what we have that is a customer code set that as well to nothing now our application will look more clean let us try to run this let me do a control f5 let us try to see uh, you know if we are getting a good user experience as compared to the previous version so there it is i'll say customer slash enter so i'll go and add here let's say test me now so test 907 9087 so when i click on add customer oh it happens fast 
so there it is test 9087 that is good okay I think it is happening very fast uh, but it did not clear this text box here you can see here the text box has not got cleared right for example let me just go and check again I'm going to add a new one this is new and then I click on add customer okay some validations test me new you can see that this is not getting cleared so something is happening bad here so now we need to go and debug the program so let us see how can we go and debug the program and also it will help us to fix this error what we have right so let me go back again here now debugging a shisha program inside visual studio is quite easy you can just go and put a debug point here and when you go and run your visual studio in a debug mode it just comes and hits over here but if you want to go and debug javascript inside visual studio then we need to do a couple of things right so first thing is uh, debugging inside visual studio if you want to debug javascript inside visual studio you need to ensure that you run using internet explorer so that's the first thing so if you are going to use chrome then the debug the debugger will not hit inside your visual studio for javascripts so first thing is you need to ensure that you run using internet explorer and second wherever you want to go and debug you need to go and insert this word debugger so i'll say debugger right and also i'd like to go and debug here because what's happening is uh, <clears throat> over here he's not setting the text box to nothing right so you can see here i've hit the debugger here as well as i've hit the debugger here so when the end user comes and he clicks on the uh, the the button right the button which is adding the customer it will first come and hit the debugger here and from here i will go i will go i will go step by step and we'll try to figure out the error second also i would like to go and put debug on the submit here so i'm going to go and put the debug on the submit great so i have put a debugger here on the send data method and just before you set the text to nothing and also i have put the debugger here in the submit action you know on the server side so let, let us go and run this program so i'm going to go and run this program in internet explorer because javascript debugging inside visual studio is only possible when you run under internet explorer so you can see that i have started running the program so there our application is running so we'll say our customer enter i will load my screen here so you can see now uh, the, the below grid is loading in asynchronous manner let it load at the background we will go and put something here saying what happened <laughs> okay let us see why that error is and i'll say cus 4567 okay so you can see here i'm typing here and at the background my customer data is loading remember the delay is of 10 seconds so it is a bit slow slow that it is okay so let us click on this add customer uh, so what should happen is because I have put a debug point in my visual studio by using this word debugger here right as soon as I click on this add customer it should go and hit this debugger here right because this add customer actually calls this send data function here so let us see if that happens or not so I'm going to click on add customer there it is you can see the debugger has hit the send data function great so let us see what happens so I'm going to go here it serializes the form calls the submit everything good and everything is nice you know but this text box does not get cleared here right so let us see what is the error oh mm, okay oh 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 the error is that i have written the syntax wrong now if you are age of 40 and you are a developer you would understand what I'm going through. So please accept my apology for this. Uh, well, the error is that uh, we need to say here dot val. So dot val and not dot text. You know, I've been programming from Visual Basic 6 and Power Builder and then ASP.NET and you know, Java. You know, people use text, text, text. You know, suddenly these jQuery guys say val, right? So sometimes it is very difficult to remember the syntax. So yes, it is dot val. So now things should work. So let me go and run my program again. So I'll do a control F5. Let us see if it works or not. So there the application is running. So let us test. Koi new. Koi new means query all are new. And I will say here Koi 903 
add customer now what will happen is because we had put that word debugger he's saying that do you want to debug now i'll say no i'm not interested in debugging i'll say no and say no and you can see now that thing has got cleared off and somewhere down below he must have added koi new koi new <laughs> koi new inside the database so where is he there it is great right so our application is working very nice remember that error which popped up when i clicked on add customer is because we have the debugger points here so if i remove this debugger points those errors will not occur okay so if i do a control f5 now those errors should not come up so quickly let me test it so koi new again right oh <coughs> mm. and uh, pga9097 whatever add customer that it is cleared everything nice 9087 somewhere down below that it is great 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 everything is working very nice as we have said previously ajax has two big advantages one is asynchronous processing and other is it sends only necessary data and receives only necessary data now some minutes back you know we were able to see how asynchronous processing was working and we also saw that in live action in the same way we would like to see that the send and receiving of necessary data is working or not so what we'll do is, so let us enable the chrome developer tools and let us watch what kind of response is coming and is that response coming as per our expectation because what should happen now is whatever response comes right we should not see heavy html response coming from the server which we saw sometimes back so let us go and enable the chrome developer tools so for that we have to press control shift i so the time we press control shift i he opens up the network tab and in this network tab we will see the request and the response so i'm going to put here shave uh, uh, ju89 Zero seven. Let's say add customer. Right now, you can see here he has added it to the database. Now, remember, you can see that this Paul transport, Paul transport. It, it is it is not happening through our application. Actually, it is happening it is happening through some plugin. So this is not our request. It is happening via some Chrome plugin. Okay, but this submit here is what exactly is the output. So uh, I'm going to go and click here, and you can see. in the response it is pure json you can see that there is no html tags which is coming out right if you remember in the previous uh, minutes you know when we saw the response it was having html as well but here you can see it is pure json collection what is coming out in other words he is only sending necessary data and he is only receiving necessary data so this improves performance this improves the user experience as well now before i end this video i would like to give a small homework here okay a kind of a small self assessment which you can take for yourself if you remember we had two screens one is a customer data entry screen and there was one more screen which we created in the previous lab that is the search screen so in the search screen when you put shave here it actually gives you out shave inside the grid right now the way i have enabled ajax jquery json in the previous screen right in the data entry screen i would like you guys to go and enable ajax on this screen okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and uh, put the source code here and in the source code the code of the jquery and json is given but i will not be explaining that via the video so this is a homework for you try to enable ajax json jquery on this screen on the source screen so that brings us to the end of lab 13 now this lab 13 video was almost a one hour video a tiring video but i think a very important video because this video brings us to a stage where we can now build asynchronous or we can say ajax based applications using mvc jquery and json and when we talk about enterprise applications uh, which are built using mvc you need to use entity framework you need to use jquery you need to use json angular knockout bootstrap and so on so just with mvc people don't build applications great so we have more 11 hours pending and with every hour we are moving towards our goal to become a true mvc professional now here's a small request from our side 
when you complete a lab in MVC, just go and post on our, on our Facebook account that is facebook.com slash questpond saying that you have completed lab 12, you have completed lab 13 because with that you will come to know that how many people have watched through our uh, video series and till what hours they have watched it and that really helps us to boost our confidence. The way you need strength you know, to watch all these videos in the same way we need uh, confidence and we need encouragement to know that what we are doing is right or not. So thank you very much and I hope that this lab was useful and after this we'll do lab 14. Thank you.